Hello, hockey and basketball fans. My name is David. I thought I would uh, start this video at 5.02 on the afternoon of Saturday, 13th of May, 2023, North America, Eastern Time. So, yes, the Leafs are out of the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs, having won an opening round series for the first time since 2004, but having still failed to reach a conference final for the first time since 2002. Get to that in a moment. So, very interesting, um, very interesting segment of Sports Center, um, and it is, uh, which is this. Have we witnessed the last chance for this group in Toronto? Well. Referring to four of uh, Austin Matthews, John Tavares, Mitch Marner, and William Nylander. Jeff Neal goes by O Dog in TSN circles, and also a co host of, of Overdrive 1050, the late afternoon weekday show on Toronto radio station TSN 50, claimed that indeed last night's game between Leafs and Panthers had been the last time that that core would be together on the Toronto team. In response, I would say that I hope so. The question will be what the board of MLC, the ownership group of the Leafs, will do. And I hope it does. Because, Ed, because Kyle Dubas through how many seasons is it? Through this many seasons has overseen the win of this many series. President Shanahan was around for this many more seasons than Dubas, but didn't win anything. Barbara was a rebuild, but still, the fact that this has happened, this rebuild that had begun after starting with the 20, 2014 offseason has brought limited playoff success. That's right. Limited. And yes, the Leafs did draft Austin Matthews first overall. But then again, so the Raptors, I believe in 2006 or whatever, uh, via Andrea Bargnani, An Italian basketball player hoping he could spark the Raptors to life. But again, the Raps had no playoff success during Bargnani's time with the team. And he was drafted first overall. Didn't even average, I don't think, 20 points per game. And that, that was a big fail by the Raptors' front office. So hopefully, I mean, the, fa the way in which the Leafs failed, it's been, you know, it's been, you know, under Shanahan, nine seasons of this nonsense, well, seven in a row, of play of, you know, repeated qualification for the postseason, and one playoff series win, two, you know, only, you know, well, and only this many games won beyond any opening round series. The core four didn't get it done overall. Neander scored this many goals. Marner, this many. Matthews and Tavares combined for this many goals. Yes, Tavares has a no movement clause, and that is full blown for however much remains of the contract. Matthews and Marner have similar clauses that cover the last season. Of each of their contracts. And that's the 2023-24 season. Should Marner. Should any member of the core four be moved. There's no doubt. The question will be. Whether these, whether MLC's board will be smart enough to know. That Dubas and Shanahan. Are part of the problem. Rather than the solution. It's difficult to win, win games. When. A team scores. 
this many goals at most. But that's what the Leafs managed to do over this many consecutive games. So what happened? It's, it's remarkable the Leafs even won this many games. Even more, they ended up winning this many. They still lost this many games. Two and five. Is that impressive? When the Leafs have scored fewer than three goals in the playoff series? This postseason, not so much. I'm not sure what it is. I believe part of it has to, part of why the Leafs lost to the Panthers, the lack of players who can throw their way around. And it just, it's the same old story. Skill only takes the team so far. And I hope Amelie's board understands this, that this Dubas experiment has failed. The Raptors, during Dubas' time as Leaf GM, have already won more playoff series. Won more playoff series during their 2019 run to a championship than the Leafs have won at all. Won during, you know, during the entire NHL salary cap era. Well, Leafs have won this many playoff series post-2004. The Raptors during the 2018-19 season that resulted in a championship won this many series. That's right. So yeah, it's a very big problem for Leafs, and I really hope there are changes. Uh, and I hold on that uh, same sports Sportsnetter segment. Dave Poulin claimed that the Leafs wouldn't be able to just completely run back the roster because of 10 pending unrestricted free agents. But I don't think, you know, they should. What should they do with pending restricted free agent Ilya Samsonov? Samsonov was injured partway through Game 3 of the Panthers Leafs 2023 playoff series. You know, kind of an okay regular season goalie, decent regular season goalie, playoff goalie, too much of a sieve. So what should the Leafs do about Sam Sonoff? I believe, in response to a claim made by the Lego Rocks 99 YouTube man that you know, the Leafs would bring back Sam Sonoff and that Sam Sonoff and Wall would make a great duo during the upcoming season, then yes. But, if it has, if that is the case, then the Leafs should not give Samson off a qualifying offer, but rather, tell to his face that if he can't find a team willing to sign him for anything less, for anything more than league minimum and a two-way contract, then <clears throat> I have no problem having Samson off come back and sign league minimum two-way contract. Because again, inconsistent play has been a problem. And that's the way things should be. And as well. I mean, certainly the Leafs did win their last series. But again, I don't think it was a mis you know, I was concerned about the use of Sam Stone off in Game 3 of the Panthers-Leafs 2023 playoff series. Why? Simple. He, you know, games one and two had been a sieve. Too much of a sieve. Too many ugly goals allowed. Though, game three, I was surprised that Sam stopped all eight shots he'd end up facing. For that collision with Jake McCabe, that ended up, well, Luke Shen, that ended up, well, pretty much sidelining Sam Stonov for the remainder of that series. And because the Leafs season ended before Sam Stonov was able to come back, well, that's when I was out effectively for the rest of the season. The rest of however long the season ended up lasting. So yes, league minimum, two-way deal. So if someone doesn't want that, at least you just say goodbye. So what about Matthews? If these want to re-sign Matthews, I don't think there's really any compelling reason. Maybe they should sign him for league minimum. I don't think he'll say yes to that, but considering his poor playoff performance, I mean, I would say that absolutely. If he doesn't want league minimum, he's got to go to. Maybe they should get something for him in the next month or so until his no movement clause kicks in and when he can't be moved without his permission. 
So, yeah. I mean, Nylander? I mean... I mean, there's hope for Nylander, but again, who knows? Depends what he wants. He did score two goals. I mean, I wish he'd scored a little, you know, quite a few more, but... He did his part more than the other of the core four. So, maybe there's a reason to bring Nylander back for, well, not much more than his current cap hit. So, we'll see what happens. Talking a lot about the Leafs, so I'm going to go into now. I'm going to try to address in this video the Oilers' loss to the Golden Knights in Game 5 of that series. And the first and second game, the how the first game for the Canadian adult men's team in its quest for uh, for a gold medal in the ongoing IHF Men's World's Top Division Tournament to end things off. Well, maybe I think I'll talk about the Canadian adult men's team first because things will be rather the quickest to talk to get out of the way. So yeah, very interesting game. It's, uh, Friday Eastern Time, 6-0 win over its Latvian counterpart. Quite a few Canucks, on, quite a few members of the Vancouver Canucks are under contract on both teams. You know, Connor Garland, one of them. Ethan Bear on the, you know, the Canadian side, on the Latvian side. Artur Shilovs under contract to the NHL Canucks via the AHL's Abbotsford-based Canucks squad. So yeah, there's a, a match. If only they weren't named the same. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's not really common for those teams, for the NHL and NHL affiliates to be named the same. Well, other than the case of the Minnesota Wild and the Iowa Wild. But I don't often talk about the, you know, about the age, you know, about the Minnesota Wild's AHL affiliate. Because I don't really need to. So yes, so Canadian team, a very important win. Against Swiss counterpart, the Slovene Alman's team was shut out earlier on Saturday, 7 0. And it was, well, keep in mind that the last tournament, uh, the Slovene team ended up in Group A Division 1, ending up in a top two spot, and thus securing promotion to the top division. So it may not be a surprise if, Slovenia goes, if the Slovene team goes back down. To Division One for the 2024 tournament doesn't matter. I'm not rooting for the Slovene team to you know to, to stay in. I want Canada's men to, to go for gold. I mean, I don't think Canadians should take so the Slovene team lightly. But again, as long as the Canadian team does its part, it's prepared, it gets traffic in front of the goaltender, whichever goalie. The Slovene count Slovene team uses, and you know it should be you know you know you know Canadian team should win that game, and I mean hopefully it won't be like the Leafs where like oh it's like a inferior opponent and we have this in the bag before we actually do. It's a big mistake. I mean I'm sure the Slovene team will want to come back, so gotta be ready. Thinking oh easy opponent no problem. We'll see about that. Canadian team has to earn that win. But again, maybe it will do that. I mean, I can understand it too, because, yes, the under-18 men's team was blown out by its Swedish counterpart 8-0 to start off that relevant tournament. And, well, embarrassed again by its Swedish counterpart 7-2 in the in a semi-final, end up having to go for bronze and barely got by, I believe it's the Slovak team in overtime. Yeah, living on the margins, you know, playing on the margins, scraping by. <laughs> there are those games, but yeah, <laughs> no. The under-18 men's world tournament for, for Canada for the for hockey Canada's team. Was a mixed bag. 
I go into the tournament, it looked like a whole a whole bunch of unfamiliar names. Kind of you know, becoming a game a little bit familiar. Carson Bjarnson, so minor league goalie. Uh, I don't know, 16, 17, whatever. Had a really not so good game against Sweden. <laughs> but again, maybe. I mean, maybe next season, you know, for the next under 18 men's world tournament, there'll be some changes. I mean, at least those players who, are, who will turn 18 this year will not be eligible to play in, the next, in any future tournament, at least in under 18 one. So yes, definitely looking forward to it. I watched a couple games. Well, part of the you know game between the Norwegian and Kazakh adult men's teams. Nor Norway Norwegian one had had a, lead, a two goal lead, ended up losing in a shootout. Yeah, and those teams, you know, one of those teams may very well be relegated. Who knows? And then there was another one, you know, with a couple of other games uh, between the. Uh, Oh, between the Latvian and Slovak teams, saw on TSN Plus. I'm not sure why there was, because you know, like there were two TSN channels. There was like, some, you know, race being broadcast. I mean, I don't know why that was. I mean, could they have just had one more, like, you know, mainstream TSN channel for that? I don't know. It's kind of stupid, but it is what it is. I ended up watching, well, for starters, you know, another game. Between the Finnish and German teams, or in uh, adult men's teams, ice hockey, and yes, I think it's important. There's no doubt whatsoever that yes, the uh, you know that was a very entertaining game to watch. Came down the wire and we were like a one goal win for the Finland team, and uh, you know, Miko Rantanen for the Avs. Have to be a part of that team, and got a little bit kind of gone. Had to get a little bit used to the international game again, as opposed to the you know NHL game. What could you do? It's uh, it's just been. I mean, but he wasn't available last for the last tournament, the last IHF Men's World Tournament because well, the Avs end up going to a Cup final and winning. Well, even that, even if the Avs had gone not to a Cup and had. Even the Avs had lost the cup final. I mean, still is. I mean, we'll have to see if the experience of Rantanen will help the his homelands, adult men's team, end up going for gold. We'll have to see, though. But again, Germany's dropped 0-2. Both losses have come to regulation. Very close game between the German and Swedish counterparts. The German and Swedish teams end up with Sweden ending up with a 1-0 victory in regulation. So yes, the international tournament... So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the Canada, you know, go two and zero. See what happens. It's not going to be an easy ride, but hey, if they can, you know, get some points, finish up in the top two, be nice. See what happens. So now to go on to the others and that game, you know, that game last night, the Golden Knights. Yeah, I go back to a video posted by the Oilers fanatic YouTube man. The first time I believe it was Patrick. I watched that uh, that uh, post game summary, post game video summary, and I'd say, yep, I agree with him on what happened with the others. You know, the, the first period was, appeared to be strong, two one lead, two power play goals. Things were looking good, and then there was that something that was missing in the second period, when the Golden Knights went to town. Uh, holding Paul by Phil Broberg, and then not even a minute after that, a high sticking penalty for two minutes by Dias Janmark. How stupid! Janmark was stupid to not keep his stick down. High sticky Paul tucked the deck for two minutes. I mean, in a lot of those cases. I mean, there are cases where there's blood drawn, there's, evidence, there's clear evidence of blood drawn, and it goes to this much. Intentional ones are not so common. I mean, there are those, you know, I mean, what I can think of is the 2021 stick swinging incident involving then Canucks D-man Taka Pullman, who, in a November 2021 
game at, at Ball Arena between the Canucks and Avs, Tumen did this to then to Kiefer Sherwood, then under contract to the Avs via the Colorado Eagles of the AHL. And Sherwood was okay, not injured, thankfully. But Pullman, the NHL Department of Player Safety, did throw the book at Pullman and, well, giving him this many games off. Suspended for this many games. It was hard to argue with the length of the suspension. That's why I agree with a claim made in uh, in a video put out, you know, I believe on the day after, by uh, Canuck Clay. Go uh, by real name is Clay Ibu. Uh, claimed that it would have been hard to argue with the length of the suspension with Dr. Pullman, and, well, there. Yeah. Yeah. So, very few high stickings, very few high sticking penalties are as a result of intentional conduct. It's just more stupid conduct than anything else. But again, in any case, back to that game with the others, and, well, it was a disaster. Bounty kill. Golden Knights didn't just score that many goals on the power on that power play they always gifted them but two the Oilers had a this on this disadvantage oh boy <laughs> it's just the house cards just came tumbling down and a bit over a minute there, there was another even strength goal there was another goal albeit even strength and while indeed the Oilers should have scored more even strength goals. Ultimately, what did them in was a not so good penalty kill. Eight power plays for the Golden Knights. Three for the Oilers. The Oilers convert on them, all of them. But on the PKs, allowed this many goals. Ugh. Undisciplined play did help do the Oilers in. It's really no surprise. And well, that's claim that was claim that made by uh, Ryan Rashog of TSN. Yeah. Again, I hope that the others will win the next this many games in a row, because that's what they have left. In the odd number of games in the series, one, three, and five. The others haven't done so well. Game one was you know, six four. Golden Knights. Game 3 was 5-1. And last night's game was 4-3 in regulation. Ugh. <laughs> it's just... I also want to mention old Stuart Skinner. The rookie goalie being, was pulled for a third straight time for a third game during the Oilers postseason run. There are questions as to whether uh, head coach Jay Woodcroft should put Jack Campbell four member of the Leafs in place to start that uh, weekend game which will be at Rogers Place in Edmonton also home of the Western Hockey League's Edmonton Oil Kings so I don't know it just I mean but I hope that Woodcroft will give Skinner a short leash I mean Skinner crafts a bed psh, out he goes And yeah, I counted this many ugly goals Skinner allowed. So again, but by no means was it the fault was last night's loss of Golden Knights only Skinner's fault. Poor defense in front of him, including on the penalty kill, helped do the Oilers in. It's hard, it's hard to get momentum going when it's killing penalties. 16 minutes worth of penalties. Or 18 minutes TV. Yeah. It was one of those with a four minuter. It was taken by Broberg. High sticking. Draw blood. Psh. Yeah. But again, it's good that the Oilers took advantage of their own power plays. And there was a big five minuter after Gold Knights winger Keegan Goldsar had hit Oilers D-man, Matthias Heck, home from behind. And that was like, into the boards, Echo appeared to crumple like an accordion. 
It looked real bad. I'm not sure if Colesar is going to receive supplementary discipline, but I hope he does. To send a message that hits like that do not belong in the NHL. I'm not sure. I have to look up on Twitter. But that was a huge impact hit. After all, lead swinger Michael Bunting last month between in a game in the in the first game of the Bolts Leafs playoff series got this many games he'd had to sit on orders for the NHL Department of Player Safety for having done this to Bolts D-man Eric Chernak. Yeah. So I think it's Michael Bunting suspension territory. Well, pretty close for uh, for Kolasar. I don't know if that is going to be back. Well, well, he did return. So that's a very good sign. Chernak didn't. But also it's been you know, supposedly Bunting's history of taking penalties, of getting in the retinal, you know, of, of not having to be on the good side, of, of Angel on its officials. And on one of the episodes of the Daytime Real Kipper and Bourne show, co-host Justin Bourne claimed that Bunts had acted too off had had acted so often like quote a donkey that unquote that you know that basically that had been you know on a, you know the NHL player safety department had enough with Bunts and needed to send a message. What Bourne claimed to Bourne claimed to have been a so called quote donkey tax unquote. So yes. The Oilers did score on that subsequent power play uh, of the uh, hit by Colsar that had resulted in Colsar's ejection via a game misconduct. But again, the Oilers, I wish the Oilers had gotten another goal on that, on that BP. It wasn't until well over three minutes in. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. But it can be overlooked that the Oilers in game five of their of their current series, scored just one fewer goal, one less goal than in game four, even with you know too much, you know with lengthy enough gaps in scoring. First period, scored by Zach Hyman, and then the next one would only occur in the third. Ugh, it's too long a gap, and that gap, the Golden Knights exploited to their exploited to their advantage. 4-2 at the end of the second period end up being 4-3 and the Oilers are in a do-or-die situation in this game on, in this game coming up on the weekend. I'm not sure what the time is yet but still what the time is for that with the start to have the time the relevant broadcast for that game is but there's no doubt that the uh, that these Oilers have to play a lot better. And yes <clears throat> I'm glad I put up the links a little bit later. But again, it's, um... Yeah. There's no doubt that these orders have to play a lot better. I mean, I definitely look forward to rooting for Canada's adult men's ice hockey team. Uh, regardless of what happens to the others, but the Leafs are out. Uh, Leafs are uh, Leafs off season. It's just hours old, but the others may follow suit on the weekend if they don't find a way to bounce back from this loss. But it's just been that way. The others have not won two games in a row. Duty. But they also have to keep, keep in mind that yes, the um, you know. That winning, you know, that also the Oilers lost the the first game of that series, and thus were already on the back foot. So they've not won consecutive games, and that loss in game one has hurt them so far. They're down down three games to two. Lose either of the next two games, 
um, and we'll have to say goodbye to the Oilers' current season. And serious questions asked about just what went down and why, you know, well, more likely defense just wasn't good enough. But that'll save it for that time. It's too early to say the Oilers are going to lose the series, but it's also too early to say whether the Oilers are going to win because they have the home crowd behind them, but they're also going to have to find a way to win on the road. And yes, laid off was Presley referring to his famous song, Viva Las Vegas, probably would have been dancing around celebration if he were alive. But he was responsible saying that me that what happens in Vegas stays there. Well, I hope the others can keep their bad habits over there, over in Vegas. And then dump them in the garbage when they return. Because if the Oilers win their sixth game, the sixth game in that series, the series will shift back to T-Mobile Arena. On the bright side, the Oilers have won a game already at that arena, so that game seven could go either way. But I'm going to say I'm going to uh, wrap this up and say if anyone was, uh, if you liked the video, you know, always click the like button. It's optional to do so, though. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you're free to do so. It is optional, but if you do subscribe, you'll receive more timely notification of videos that I put out. Uh, I do try to put out videos at least every second week, if I can. But this is very particularly, you know, very busy hockey season, so I'm going to try to put out videos more frequently than just every other week. Anyway, with respect to the Stanley Cup playoffs and Canada's adult men's ice hockey team, I'm going to say, go, go. And go, Canada go.